Yeah. So then, I think we didn't find out his diagnosis until like, they did rapid genetic testing on us because essentially when he was born, all the anomalies they were seeing, the geneticists in Edmonton couldn't figure it out. They, they didn't know what it led to. So they did blood testing on us. So we got exome sequencing and microarray done mm -hmm. um, and they sent it away for rapid genetic testing. And then they came back with um, saying that essentially um, the changes that he had um, on what they call the CHRNG gene um, are associated with uh, a syndrome called multiple pterygium syndrome, Escobar type. So there's two types of multi multiple pterygium syndrome. The first one is a lethal type, and so typically kids who have that type of, of the syndrome don't live very long, like they might die in utero or they might uh, live for a very short period after, after being born. Arden has Escobar type, so um, it's very rare. So the geneticist that talked to us about it didn't really have a ton of information. She'd never witnessed it firsthand. It just kind of had whatever she researched online about it to tell us. Um, and she obviously understood the genetic component behind it. So essentially Brody and I each have a change on that CHRNG gene. So we're both carriers for it and we both we each have a different change on that same gene. So the, the chances of us both having that are, are astronomical really. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and essentially none of our None of the neonatologists or anybody that we met in the NICU had ever heard of Escobar syndrome before. Um, and the ones that had, had never actually seen it. Um, and so, yeah, we started doing research online, essentially. Our, our head neonatologist kind of found some, some skull, you know, um, articles. Some research articles. Some research but... articles on it, I guess. To, to give us a little bit more information, but it but it was very, uh, yeah, we started, I joined a Facebook group right away for it, because there's, you know, um, and there's a few individuals on there who kind of talk about their, their journeys, and um, yeah. There's just limited knowledge. There is. On, on Escobar syndrome. It's yeah. uh, such a rare condition that yeah. there's been minimal research uh, based on what the prognosis or what the out likely outcomes are um, yeah. and the ones that have been done have such a small sample size that it's hard to kind of draw any conclusions from them uh, and then with Escobar syndrome from our experience thus far is it's kind of a spectrum in terms of what the children present with um, mm -hmm. Like there are some commonalities, like obviously, you know, a lot of the, the scoliosis and the respiratory um, distress and, you know, some facial features, um, mm -hmm. the feet, the multiple muscle and joint contractures, that kind of thing. But it, but it presents so differently in, in each individual, so it's hard to say this is how, you know, the progression is going to go. Yeah. And that's why we really no one has any answers as to whether he's going to be off his ventilator, whether he's going to be able to feed orally, whether he'll be able to walk on his own, um, or if he'll be limited in his mobility. Um, lots of those questions are just, uh, we don't have a, a concrete answer and it's just we take take it day to day and, and the little milestones that he does achieve, we, we celebrate. Yeah, we just don't, he's just on his own timeline. Mm -hmm. We just say, once well, Arden calls the shots and <laughs> You know, we don't compare him, I don't, so yeah, we don't compare him to any other kids. We don't say, oh, you know, babies are typically doing this or that mm -hmm. at age, you know, whatever months. Um, you know, we just start where he's at and work gradually with his goals and then the skills that he can achieve. But And the same thing with his muscle and the rest of his muscle and joint contractures, like at, at present, Arden has come a long way as far as how he can move his, especially his upper limbs, like his hands and his arms, his shoulders, like the range that he's gotten in his shoulders. Um, when he was born, he was so tight um, and could barely move his hands, you know, like his one hand couldn't even open. Um, so this his hand. shoulders, we couldn't even take them up to 90 degrees. Um, and now, you know, the other day he, he was petting his hair and I'm like, oh my goodness, you can touch your hair. Like, that's so amazing. For so, him, that's 
you know, that's a big milestone. So when he was born, this hand here, I couldn't even fit my pinky finger underneath his underneath his fingers and we can completely extend it now and he can he can kind of get it I would say three quarters of the way he actually prefers using this hand to grab things like if you watch and then this wrist was bent this section. like that yeah and now it's we can 90. now we can kind of get it past neutral and functionally past neutral as well he can get it yeah. there so we started splinting his hands worked with the OT and PT in the hospital and started splinting his hands and wrists when he was quite young. Um, so that's definitely been helpful. And then just, you know, following through with all the range of motion exercises and stretching and um, that kind of thing to get him moving. We were very vig vigilant about that because we knew that if, you know, if he was going to get anywhere, we were going to have to help him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to give you another section, honey. So the one thing that we'll likely have to oh, whoa bless cough. You. <laughs> Did you cough your sneeze? <laughs> Do you even know? <laughs> Do you even know? Yeah. Um, one thing that we'll have to probably address um, with the orthopedic surgeons is his hip, knee, and ankle range of motion. Um, so this foot on his right has something called a vertical talus. So generally the talus is kind of the ankle bone that moves our foot up and down in a general sense. And instead of sitting horizontal, his just developmentally turned and is sitting up and down. So what that naturally does uh, is turn his foot out and up. So incredibly, like we've got quite a bit of movement in his foot. Um, I do think it would be functional, uh, but ultimately we just want to make sure that we get as much as, as possible with him so that, yeah, now he's moving it. Yeah. So originally he wouldn't, wouldn't even no. think, wouldn't, wouldn't even have a yeah. flicker of movement in, in that foot. And when he was born, this foot was really almost turned around backward. Mm -hmm. um, and, and very little this, you know, very little movement in the legs. Um, so. And his legs were always bent yeah. upwards. So, and they still are, but. So one thing you'll notice in lots of Arden's pictures and videos and stuff is, is that, that his knees and his hips are always bent. And, and like I say, that's about as straight as we can get the knee. Just how he's positioned, we can't do the hip right now. Um, but they'll bend all the way up. It's just the straightening component. And like we said, he's made leaps and bounds in, in the right direction with those and with his active movement. It's just, I think we're going to hit kind of a plateau. We, well, we, we never hope that we do hit a plateau, but if we do hit a plateau, then we need to um, probably do what we call serial casting. Yeah, so um, this spring, um, basically the, the orthopedic team in the clubfoot clinic um, even though Arden hey. doesn't have club foot, he kind of has the opposite of club foot. Um, they're going to work Boy. with us, hopefully, to yeah try some serial casting uh, to see if we can get more range out of his out of his legs. I guess you could say. Yeah, or that's kind of step one. Um, that's serial casting? serial casting is essentially just like if you went to the hospital with a broken bone and they put you in a cast. Uh, it's the same kind of idea, but for him, what you do is you're going to stretch his knee as far as it can go. You're going to put one of those casts over his, over his knee from hip to basically ankle. Toes. And toes, yeah, because yeah, we're going to do ankle right as well. Yeah. Um, and then you leave him in that cast for one week. And then after a week, you take that cast off um, and you measure it and hopefully you gained a little bit. So you stretch it a little more and put a new cast on. And then you keep doing that until yeah. ideally you get it straight or so essentially, you get it as far as possible. It's like a range of motion stretch, but 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So that you're getting, you know, uh, right? Yep. I guess you could say that. 
Yeah, it's like the stretching we would do normally for his range, but you're getting that stretch all the time to hopefully gain a little more range. And we'll see how that goes. Like Brody said, that's kind of step one. And then if we don't get success with that, we might be looking at tendon lengthening surgery or um, we definitely, we expect that eventually he may have to have this vertical talus corrected with surgery because it's, it's, a, it's a bone, like, how would you say that, hun? It's a bony? Abnormality. It's, yeah, it's a bone abnormality. It's not a, it's not a muscle mm -hmm. uh, condition, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't know, I mean, as far as Arden, like his mobility right now, like he's obviously delayed in a lot of milestones as far as, uh, you know, rolling over that um, crawling, that kind of thing. Um, he can roll right <laughs> to left. <laughs> oh, you can see me in section. <laughs> yeah. He can roll right to left. He can, um, you know, when he's sitting up, he's, he's obviously able to reach for toys. He sits in his little bouncy chair and he's starting to get a little bit of movement with his legs, but you know, tummy time for him is obviously very hard. Um, he hates it for one thing, <laughs> and and then it's difficult with his with his tube too, right? With his trach and and the and the circuit, um, and then with the, the the limitations that he has as far as his range, um, in his hips, in his shoulders. So. With the limitations that he has with his with his his range and his shoulders and his hips and and you know his body um it's very difficult for him to you know he's he's they say he's um you know got a little bit lower tone and it's hard for him to push himself up so that's really a precursor to sitting up on your own that's a precursor to crawling uh tummy time is really important for that so we continue to work on it but it's you know it's hard for him so um, yeah, we don't know if he'll crawl, we don't know if he'll walk, uh, we just kind of take every day as it comes and, mm -hmm. and just try to get, you know, he's on his own timeline, so we just let him call the shots and we just try to help him along the way grow as much as he can. Hi! Yeah, we do! <laughs> what do you think? Can you give it to a smile? Oh, oh bless oh. you! <laughs> Yeah, because like when, you know, even even right now, like I just went to put on his clothes the other day and I was thinking to myself, like when I go to put his arm in a sleeve now, I can lift his arm up like this. And that's mm -hmm. huge. Like, you know, when he was when he was younger, you know, even if even four months ago, I would have to, you know, maneuver it in differently because he couldn't he didn't have that range. Um, and even just his, his fine motor, like we're seeing lately, you know, he'll, he'll grab a toy with one hand and like flick it with one finger and he's controlling that one finger. And it's, that's, that's huge. That's amazing for us because, you know, he, he just didn't have that ability when he was younger, right? Mm. You know, even just his gross motor skills, we were, we were happy when he was starting to show signs that he was developing those, but now his fine motor, his, his grasp and his dexterity and, and just the control of the, all of his digits is, is getting quite remarkable. Do you know you're the star? <laughs> I feel like you do. <laughs> <laughs> do you know you're the star? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, the big thing is, is, is we just want, we don't want everyone to know about Arden and not to be scared of of you know what's attached to him we want them yeah. to understand that it's just to help him get through each day and and yeah. um, to never hesitate to ask us any questions about yeah. how he's doing what something is you yeah know. i think that's um, huge especially i see that i mean as a teacher i see that a lot in school where kids are scared of of kids that have differences because they've never seen it before and nobody's ever explained it to them and and you know lack of knowledge totally creates fear and I just you know I think the more information that we can provide to people the more we can educate them on art and situation 
you know, when he finally does get out and about, it won't be scary or awkward. It'll just be like, oh, that's Arden, and that's mm -hmm. who he is, right? Mm -hmm. And and we want, you know, people to feel comfortable asking us questions and and just getting yeah. to know him and love him like we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we love our little boy, and we love talking about him just as much. So yeah. we uh, we don't want people to be <laughs> to be anxious about you know any, any questions that they may have. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh, big cough. Yeah, no, as far as even like the future short term wise goes or like, um, you know, the next month, few months, the next year, Ooh. that kind of thing. We don't really know how things will go just depending on, you know, like we talked about when uh, we try, we go to try serial casting for his uh, for his knees and his feet. Um, you know, if that doesn't work, then we're probably looking at surgery. Um, and so with that comes, you know, we've seen Arden in, in recovery for surgery before and it can take weeks or months, right? Um, and so for us, that's a little bit scary because we don't want to have to do that whole, you know, be apart thing again. <laughs> where Brody's here and I'm there and we're, we're not together as a family anymore. So that, that scares us. Um, you know, just the thought of, we're very careful, obviously right now, especially with COVID, we don't have hardly anyone coming into our house and, and anyone who needs to masks and sanitizes and, you know, tries to protect him as much as possible, but it's not just COVID we're scared of. We, you know, if he gets the common cold, like we say, that could, that could put us back in the hospital for a couple weeks, a month, we don't know, right? And, and with that comes, um, you know, we can't, we can't stay in the hospital with him. <laughs> they don't provide beds for, for parents. So, you know, that, that comes with the cost of hotels and travel and, you know, um, everything that comes along with that. So, um, and then potentially Brody having to take time off work. Um, so, you know, he's very stable right now and we're very grateful for that. Um, but we're always prepared just in case um, something were to take a different turn. Um, and you know, at, at this time, we'll see what happens. We don't, we don't know if I'll be able to return to work. Um, we'll see how things go in the next little bit, I guess. Hey? Yeah. <laughs>